Hello my friends, I'm back with my new video and as I promise you, we'll be simulating a FinFET model free of cost. So, what you need to do is connect your PC or laptop to a internet connection and just put this URL that is nanohub.org and as soon as you put it, click enter, you will be getting this website. This is very 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 awesome website. This is not only made for uh, FinFET, but it has many other things as well to simulate. But uh, we'll be right now we'll be concentrating on uh, FinFET model only. So, uh, yeah, first what you need to do is log in. Uh, I have already uh, signed up, so I have get, I'm getting login option. But in case if you are not a regular user, you have or uh, if you are a first user, you need to sign up with. Uh, either your Facebook account or Google account or anything okay so I am I am already logged in with my Facebook so as soon as you log in your full profile appears your my, my name and uh, the projects I have done tools I have used resources tools and a lot of big stuff so uh, what you need to do is you need to go to resources then tools Mugfit is a uh, Mugfit or a multiple gate field effect transistor or a penfet is just a one single tool out of this hundred and thousands of tools. So uh, we need to find Mugfit in this second uh, list. So here you go, the Mugfit, then launch a tool. So as soon as you launch the tool, the toolbox appears. Now we are gonna simulate a penfet device. So before we start simulating, let me ask you if you want to design your own device what are the things that comes to your mind first first is the physical dimensions what would be the length width height and all the stuff then what are the materials that you, you gonna use uh, in that device with the help of this tool you can build your device but once it uh, once you build your device it has to be simulated with certain conditions like temperature or in our case a gate to source voltage drain to source voltage and many more things so those all things together are called as environment so now we got three things as uh, our physical dimensions then uh, materials and environment so can you see those three things easily over here structure material and environment the structure is nothing but our physical dimension so this is our structure of a double gate we have gate up and gate down these are the two gate this it is double gate then we this red color is your insulator your oxide then we have source drain here and channel here and this blue are drain source contact made of metal so uh, first option is device type so in in the device type you need to choose a finfit you you got two option nano wire and finfit out of, out of that you have to choose a finfit then we have a dimensions uh, what do you want a 2d or a 3d 3d option is not uh, visible over here uh, because they have just removed that tool earlier they used to have 3d as well it would be very very great if you could bring that back again but right now we'll be working with this 2d double gate and this is awesome then a gate type you can choose either a metal or a poly gate uh, currently metal gate metal gates are in fashion uh, it was like uh, when 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 the device was first invented they were using metal and that's how the name was invented metal oxide semiconductor so the metal was used uh, uh, at the very beginning then they switched to poly due to some reasons then now they are back again to the metal now uh, you have to choose the metal over here then go for structure so as i told you in structure you have to mention all the physical dimensions for your device while learning this tool side by side will be also learn how to design a 14 nanometer double gate device actually that was my uh, project part but i don't mind sharing it with you so uh, first uh, first let me uh, set the geometry higher that would be more easy uh, our get length is 14 nanometer then our source drain 14 nanometer is a recent technology that has 
published in the market by Intel. So we are doing that. 14 nanometer, then source drain extension length you go for 8. Yeah, uh, I have uh, uh, referred many papers and uh, I have done few simulations on my own and then I have come down to these values. So uh, you can't randomly put any values, it will not simulate. So uh, we have said source drain extension length as 8 nanometer. This is your source length, extension length, and this is your drain extension length that is 8 8 nanometer on both the sides. Then uh, gate overlap to source and gate overlap to tail. This is your gate overlap to source, gate overlap to train. This is 2 nanometer, this is 2 nanometer. Our LG is 14 nanometer. Once you set with this, let's go back uh, on geometry X. Now you need you need to choose uh, channel width this and offset thickness. Okay, our channel width is gonna be 5 nanometer and offset thickness is gonna be 1 nanometer. So, and they have a geometry Z option as well, but it is uh, not not accessible to the user as this is only 2D simulation that we are doing. Uh, third dimension is not accessible to the user. And this doping and caution doping, you keep it as it is. It's not gonna affect your simulation much. So, moving to the materials now. Uh, we have a dielectric constant in channel that is 11.7 and dielectric constant in insulator. If this is 3.9, that means it is SiO2. Uh, now, if you want to choose another high K like HFO2 or Al2O3, you can just change and put your values over here. But, 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 make sure when you are varying your insulator material, you also vary your oxide thickness here according to, according to the formula of effective oxide thickness. And this is very, very, very necessary. And many people tend to forget this. Uh, if you don't make changes according to your uh, changes to oxide thickness according to your material your simulations are just gonna be uh, a couple of graphs that has no sense or no meaning so when you are changing your uh, this dielectric constant here make sure you make changes in oxide thickness as well uh, now uh, how to do that I'll not get into it but you can just search on Wikipedia you'll get the direct formula and it's very easy you just have to do a couple of calculations. You just have to put the, your values in, in that calculation and you will be getting your uh, new thickness value that you have to put in structures. So, uh, then we go for band structure. You, didn't, you don't need to make any changes here. These are all uh, constant values and let them be constant only. You don't need to choose a mobility or saturation velocity and all. So, uh, moving on, we have an environment. Uh, this is a temperature, we have kept it on 300, then we have gate bias, this, uh, these are our gates, we are giving voltage starting from 0 to 1 and there will be 11 bias points, bias points as in this 0 to 1 range would be divided into 11 parts and for those all parts it will be simulating, so total it will, it will have 11 steps from uh, when it is moving from 0 to 1. You can keep it as it is. Uh, then moving on for a drain bias, uh, it is starting from 0 0.05 to 1 and it has uh, two bias points. Uh, let's keep this two only. Then moving on for options plot, uh, you will be getting x axis on your, uh, you will be getting gate voltage on your x axis, uh, a drain ID, drain current ID on y axis and it would be logarithmic y axis. And this is a critical current for threshold voltage. This is generally 1 e raised to minus 4. Do not change this. Do not change this. This is, this is the main factor which, which will affect your all results. Like you'll get your IDVG correct, but your DIBL threshold lesses uh, all would be just a uh, mess. So do not make any changes. This is uh, th actually there is a formula uh, W by L uh, into this uh, 10 raised to minus 4. This E raised to minus 4 means 
10 raised to minus 4. So your width upon your length into 10 raised to minus 4 that gives the a, a single point on your IDVG graphs and the voltage corresponding to that point is your threshold voltage. This is the actual definition of threshold voltage or this is how the threshold voltage is actually calculated. So uh, now we are done with environment, structural material environment, all three things are done. Now moving on for simulator. What we have in simulator is different types of uh, simulator that is battery and profit for uh, for a double gate FED, battery is the best tool that you can have and for rest of the options you can choose yes or no according to your needs whether you want a band gap narrowing, band to band tunneling, concentration dependent mobility or even if you keep this as it is nothing much would be affected you will get a normal uh, basic level simulations uh, which, 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 would, which would be uh, acceptable by anyone. So you don't need to worry about it. So now we go for simulate. The simulations will take time depending on your values. If your values are very very small or if your device is very small, it will take much more time to simulate. Uh, you need to have patience. Uh, it will uh, approximately take 5 to 10 minutes now. But let me tell you this is the minimal time to simulate any VLSI device. Yes, you heard me right. 5 to 10 minutes or even 20 to 30 minutes is the minimal time to simulate so this 5 10 minutes are actually no big deal so now my simulation is ready let's see uh, if we have a graph here and we have a result let's see how many results we have uh, oh my god a big list of results right so nano muffet tool calculates all this stuff for you no other simulator will readily give you threshold voltage, sub-threshold swing, drain induced barrier loading or electrostatic potential all the simulators that are in market that they gives you only IDVG characteristics rest all the things are assumed to be calculated by you they assume that you know how to calculate them yes this is how the industry works <laughs> let's see uh, IDVG characteristics so as we had mentioned in our environment our IT is logarithmic and it is on y axis and on x axis we have v. So this is our graph, it is quite good and very much correct graph. Then move on for threshold. Threshold is decreasing as our VD is increasing. Okay, that also is correct. Now let's move for sub threshold swing. Okay, sub threshold swing is increasing as our VD is increasing. Fine. Now, DIP. Where is the graph? Oh my god, I don't have any graph. What I have is just a dot. Why? Because if you search a formula for DIBL, let me do that for you. Okay, if you search the formula for DIBL on uh, Google, you will get a Wikipedia link or directly go for Wikipedia DIBL. You get this formula. Now, what is in this formula? It says uh, threshold voltage at VDD minus threshold voltage at lower uh, VDS value then your VDD minus your lower VDS value uh, as you can see there is a difference between this two how many VDS points we have taken how many bias points were given in the drain bias only two so 0 0.05 and 1 subtract you get a 1 DI bill only 1 DI bill so now if you increase this value you will get a 2 points and We'll get a graph. So let's try this. So our simulations are ready. Let's directly move for DIBL. Yeah, you got only two points and a line connecting these two points giving you a graph of DIBL. So as VD is increasing, your DIBL is decreasing. Uh, it is advisable to keep at least five to six points in drain bias to have a smooth graph of DIBL even in SS and threshold voltage value. So, uh, and yeah, one more thing, uh, as you can see, uh, here there is a line appeared showing you simulation 2, number of bias 0.3. And when you click here, you get simulation number 1, number of bias 0.2. So, it shows you, it, it, it keeps the history of your uh, earlier simulations. But once you terminate this station, this would not remain anymore. So, it is better that you 
download your each and every results you have a download download option here you can either go for data or image now how to download this sim uh, simulations and keep this all results in your uh, own pc and how to map this into excel and how to create a graphs in excel from this results or data that you have got i'll be showing you all these stuffs in my next video so till then stay tuned and keep watching my videos and and do not do not do not forget to subscribe me hit the like button share this video amongst your friends and comment down below on whether you like my videos or not so till then bye see ya and enjoy the nanohub 2 bye bye